there are loads of black spots worldwide. You may say that's fine because 65% of the world population is living in 15%, but you have many areas where you have many applications where companies they want digitalization of their infrastructure, of their assets. And that are in these areas, or these areas, or even here. And it's not, but way too expensive today to roll out terrestrial network. And you cannot cover all. The only technology that covers all today is satellite computing. So kidneys, we are a satellite operator. We uh, come from 40 years of experience already uh, from the French Space Agency. We supply already today a global coverage. We operate nine satellites that cover any, every single spot on Earth. We add 25 extra satellites from Q1 next year. So we are fully financed because we had a fundraising in 2020 of 100 million euros. So we are part of the next 40, which are the most, the 40 most promising startups in France since 2021. You can see here all the technical details. So it's global coverage already today, but tomorrow even better because tomorrow we have a latency of picking up information wherever you are on the globe in less than 15 minutes. Our constellation is optimized for IoT, so roughly a message is 90 bytes maximum. Low power consumption, easy hardware integration because we already integrated with all the shelf equipment, electric equipment, electronic equipment existing today. Low airtime cost, two way communication, uplink and downlink. We can, I, um, we have an organization with terrestrial networks, so we, we make agreements with telecommunication operators because what we want to offer to the customer is the best of each network. So that means if you are into a terrestrial coverage, the satellite will be only fall back. That means if there's no terrestrial network, the device will switch automatically to, to, to the satellite. So we already made major agreements with people like Orange, uh, Telefonica, uh, Vodafone to do hybridization of the network. Because the customer, what he wants at the end, is one channel out, independent of the technology that's offered. So here you have the overview of our um, infrastructure. You need to know that really we operate from end to end. We have the infrastructure in space. We also have 20 ground stations worldwide to collect the data as quick as possible from our satellites. And we have our own service center. So we really operate from end to end. Here you can see uh, here you can see the constellation. So each spot is a diameter of 5,000 meters, uh, kilometers. So this I will skip because it enters too much in the detail, but it sees the end-to-end -end operational part. So we can imagine ourselves as we are an LP1 operator in space. You can see that Kinese has a global coverage comparing to LoRa 6 volts, LTM or any other technologies. And we are on really low data, data rate. For today, for example, with this device, you can transmit at 100 milliwatts to the satellite. So that means if you send one message per day, probably it has an autonomy of 10 years. By 2030, over 70 billion devices will be connected. Imagine the next generation of IoT. This new IoT will integrate seamlessly, need little power, and be compatible with other systems. It will also be robust, reliable, and inexpensive. In 2022, this revolutionary IoT will be a reality, available for everyone, everywhere, and for all devices. Its origins, the Argos Geopositioning and Data Collection Satellite System, the first IoT system in the world. Building on this proven system will provide connectivity for a whole host of activities, extreme sports, agriculture, small-scale fishing, safety at sea, logistics, and many more. Kinase opens up a new world of possibilities. You've been waiting for this. Wait no longer. Sign up now for the first IoT connection from space. So, um, some information about the different
different use cases. Uh, so you can see the historical, scientific and environmental part. Very important uh, use case is uh, everything that's linked to smart agriculture because with space technology you can have soil monitoring, uh, water storage monitoring, livestock management, uh, weather stations at a very interesting uh, price level with very interesting price level on data. Um, transport and logistics, everything that's linked to multimodal multi transport, so in combination, international transport. Uh, the last mile coverage with satellite connectivity. I can imagine that the lease from Europe arrives in a port in uh, any other international destination. And then it has another owner to 200 kilometers to be done. You know that there will be always a traceability of the information due to satellite technology, even if there's no roaming agreement with the telco operator, even if there's no trust on network available, the space connectivity will cover and back you up on the information from end to end. Network and infrastructure, this is very important as well. On the network and infrastructure monitoring, you can see oil and mining sites. You can have pipeline monitoring, remote uh, infrastructure monitoring of the electrical utilities. When you have overhead aerial lines for power supply, you can monitor the pulse frame of the light equalization, the vibration. If there's any information that gives a doubt about the integrity of the infrastructure, it can give an alert to the utility before there is a power shortage. Maritime, so that is best for monitoring for fisheries, but also leisure boats. For example, if you would like to collect information in the tanks of the boats, uh, water tanks, batteries, whatever you have as sensors on board, you can collect information from the sensors and send the information to space. You know, in, uh, in our part of uh, West Africa, for example, we are told there are uh, rigs, oil rigs, yes. and they said that certain fishing vessels should not go beyond certain uh, area. Yes. How does this support say that once a vessel or a fishing boat goes beyond that area, there could be a trigger or something to get that? Yes. Uh, you can do this by putting on a geolocalization on the, on the vessel, which is mandatory, and with our information, you can do geofencing which means that uh, you can give an alert if the, the vessel goes outside of the authorized yeah. uh, So this is something we would like to work on if possible. Then the second on this transport, you know, if you are in our part again, we have landlocked countries. Those countries do not have uh, seaports. Yes. So they take their goods through other countries that are on the port. Now, so if a container is supposed to go to a landlocked country. Now, they end up not going, then they will offload it in the, for example, uh, this country which is at the lock at the port, mm -hmm. says if you are going to the other side, you don't pay a certain tax, it has to pay, it has to get there. Mm -hmm. But because of avoidance of the tax, some people will say this container is supposed is, is going to the landlock but it's not going there. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure that there's something on the container that you can monitor it to the final destination where it's supposed to be? Yes, you can pull a, same way you can put on a trace, a tracer on the container, which means that you can, for example, program five information or six information per day. And that means that you have a localization tracked by the satellite, by Doppler system, because uh, in some countries, and especially Africa, people spoof the GPS information of uh, trackers, which you cannot do with uh, satellite technology. You cannot spoof the information about the organization. All right, so this this very, uh, very I need to, we, we can expand later yes. on this too, because of the significance it has on the economy, so that uh, I will later want us to, to dwell more on it. I didn't want to forget, that's why I wanted to have you spot on. Okay. So please continue. Only outdoor, you need to outdoor. have a visibility with the satellite. Yeah. You have the advantage though, comparing to other satellite operators, is that <coughs> we operate in UH Japan, which is uh, we can use only directional antennas, which means that you already catch the satellite at five degrees and it, and it will catch the information during the full satellite pass, which lasts roughly about 10 minutes. So, um, we have been testing uh, in some uh, airports. 
where you have huge uh, storage areas which are what we call light indoor because uh, it's not very close building so we get information but the liability is there for example I need to send a lot of information to collect uh, one or two messages by the satellite and it does work but it's not something we intend to say so the device should be on the container outside of the container especially why container is in metal. Senegal, yes. that car. Ah, yes. Whenever they say, for example, uh, you, uh, you can hear. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not uh, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm French because I live in French, but I'm uh, originally from the Netherlands. Netherlands, okay, yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. So you can see all these different use yes. cases. And then we enter a little bit more into the details of each use case because uh, we identified appropriate use cases for IoT. Because you have uh, broadband services with lots of more of data, so we have identified all these kind of uh, use cases more in detail for IoT. So you can see that these, these are all uh, relevant use cases on which we always they have a proof of concept running and mobile. So you have proof of concept for most of this already yes. that you can you'll be willing to share with us so that yes. we can uh, yes. we can use that to develop our own proposals for for, for this. Thing. I don't enter into each, uh, each detail, but you can see there are some very relevant uh, use cases today. Uh, first of all is uh, early fire detection, and you can see with the climate change, you see the disasters you see in the United States, the disasters we have in Europe. The early fire, forest fire detection is very big topic. Another very big topic, of course, today as we speak about sustainability is the smart water management. It's the water usage, uses, it can be the quality of the water, the, the usage, it can be the storage. But the water is a very, very, I think in Senegal, you have monitoring of um, the water um, the water levels in, in some areas that are done by satellite technology. And what is very interesting is the combining, for example, of IoT with imagery. Because today you use imagery, but imagery is expensive. But you could already have a first alert situation through IoT because IoT can give you for example a rare situation of temperature of the water or it can give you a rare information about the level of the water before you order an image so it, it, it gives you a more economical way to manage also satellite data. And this is a little bit our uh, way to help you to understand the technology. We have different uh, discovery programs available for our partners because uh, we want a maximum number of people to discover uh, our technology. So we have a full program of different programs to help you to get, let's say, used with the technology, test the technology, and we will help you also to build a local ecosystem. For example, two weeks ago, I was in Brazil, where we have a first POC on um, home monitoring of the aerial overhead electrical lines because the mining industry there they have uh, the electrical lines um, that are overhead which means that we can monitor vibration uh, inclinization shock which can give the utility of first information about the possible power uh, shortage they may get next and each power shortage means several millions of dollars when the production site stops. So we 
We have different programs depending on the customer. For example, the shuttle is a demonstration device which is plug and play. We use for key accounts like utilities, oil and mining companies. We can give to get people that are in charge of digitalization the device that's plug and play with some nice dashboards. He looks and he says, okay, this is what I want. We try to find a solution next and, and build a solution together with the device maker and also a, um, a company that handles their data. We also use with uh, universities and schools, very important, because we train people in satellite technology now when they're still inside the university or engineering school, because these people are tomorrow the people that are in charge of digitalization in the big, in the big uh, companies. We also integrate today with um, off-the-shelf electronics, because we don't intend to make the electronics ourselves for all our lives. So today we're already integrated with ST Engineering with one of their off-the-shelf chipsets. We're also discussing with other chip makers worldwide. For example, in Brazil we found a local chip maker. And he's going to integrate the stock kidneys. So don't, we don't need to ship electronics from, from Europe to, 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 Brazil. To, to, to South America. So this is the way how we go to work and how the way we help people to get, let's say, uh, known with the technology. Short version of the first version. I mean, more than more than enough. <laughs> now we are we are the same page with those who came first. Yeah, okay. very very uh, very interesting. And we have already identified uh, certain areas we can collaborate. And so uh, we will keep we'll keep in touch and see how we can, uh, especially those uh, POC you've already have in the various uh, various disciplines and uh, areas, so that we will be able to identify our own uh, needs or requirement to start with. We have uh, one, uh, one of our uh, partners that he did the NAP Friatic or Senegal monitoring with already devices.